Well, let's go ahead and see if they can do it. Map number six. Let's get locked and loaded. Let's see what it's all about in the $75,000 community showdown. And we're kicking things off with your two-time map winners of day number one, Kaylee, Dongy, and Scummin. That most wanted is pinged. And they're ready to get us on the move. Here we go. Most Wanted is a great way to start in terms of getting resources and getting your loadout quickly. A lot of floaters in the sky. This is reminiscent to the good old days here. Tiffin, I guess we're in the good old days because Urzikstan is a blast to play. And a ton of players floating into what looks almost similar to a downtown is reminiscent of Verdansk. And quickly, some of our teams into some hot drop contests. And it looks like Tommy Z. Smith winning that encounter with Mizu playing in kind, and there's a couple more to fight though, and now Tommy in trouble all by himself. Nothing like quick swim here to divert the attention away from the chaos at top, but that's kind of what happens, right? You just start pistoling each other out on the roof, you find that supply bin, you grab a weapon, and then, you know, you notice yourself. Wait a second. Hey, yo, what we just throw? Was that a decoy? Because if so, I love how everyone just picks up whatever resources, whether they get a trophy system, they just immediately throw it. And you just use what you find in any buildings. Adapt. Overcome. We've lost, uh, looks like Mizu in the Gulag. Tommy gonna try to win okay. this, he does just barely through the banister, grab a knock, but team play, team fights, marking squad doesn't really ultimately matter all that much. Tommy floats and waits and uh, goes down. That's why you've got a body stack. Unfortunately, Tommy didn't have any backup, but let's check in with the team in second, only by a couple points. This is DJ Moss on your screen with Braxton and Super Evan. This newfound trio, there was big question marks out there when they announced their team. Would they play well together? All three individually skilled, not a ton of experience together, some differences in personalities, but they're showcasing. They're one of the best trios out there. They're one of the teams to beat. As Braxton goes down, DJ Moss is quickly there to cover. It's one weak. Calls out to Ev, who quickly finds the trade. Very well done for this duo. This is the same building we saw previously in an earlier map where DJ Moss was prone in the stairway, like on the second to third level, and he took out Desmond. So they typically make a lot of those same rotations, and since they land in Rostava shops, that's kind of where this action is happening. But we see that redeployment drone coming through, going to land nearby. But since this is their drop spot, they are so very familiar with it. And Braxton, full dead in the Gulag. And the team is coming back. Comms coming in. Can they handle this? Connecting on a few. Shifty's going to come back. There's no way he does it. Oh, and it's shifty. Shifty yeah, I was gonna Soka. Say, this is one of the other things that a lot of these players will figure out is which team they're fighting. Obviously, if they get a knock, they'll get a name. Then they'll know who they're fighting, and then they can say, okay, do we want to take this fight? Do we want to try to address this fight from a different angle? Can we fly at this team? If you're Adrian, you're saying that you can challenge everybody, but if it's shifty on the other side, you're at least thinking twice. Yeah, I got killed. Uh, that's fucking Joe and them. Oh, there's such fucking credits for that, bro. Uh, Soka's literally a dick right here. Well, anything can happen here in the, <laughs> the 75,000 community showdown. A good thing, there are gulags. We'll check in with them to see how that pans out for them later. But regardless, Team Braxton currently in second place with one map left on the day. Soka and Shifty, a duo trying to withstand. And let's tune in with Shucks for the first time this broadcast. We saw a lot of them in World Series Warzone. They're just going to be able to grab their loadout and kind of... Wait a second, does that say Adrian as the bounty? Hey, that's unfortunate for Adrian. Yeah, I mean, this is a definitely a team that you, you think twice about fighting, right? Like, Bounty is one thing. You get some information. If you take the team out, hopefully you can open up a window for somebody. But they're already at the top. They're incredibly talented. have a lot of Kim. Shucks' his squad. He, he and Piero playing with, I believe, King AJ. And they picked up AJ as a third for this event. Not sure whether or not they'll play with him for the course of, uh, you know, Urzikstan comp scene. But for today, playing together. And as we swap over to former teammates of King AJ, at least in a couple tournaments, but today, FIFA kill, Lennon, again, playing with Symphony. 
and doing well. Top five want to maintain that position, and they're keeping up this aggressive pace early with a ton of UAVs, a ton of ways to gain information, and a ton of ways to push teams. Oh, no, not the guy in the sky. Comms that you would hear, you'd think people are just like, what are they talking about? Well, man, they're just playing Warzone, and people are just flying in. But a two hunt on Symphony, Bounty will expire in three seconds, so they'll kind of lose the reverse tracking aspect to this. But FIFA and Symphony both kind of flying in and being able to give Lennon a lot of information on the ground. Right, we'll all fly in together. Quick pickup on phase testy. So far, so good for the trio. I think that's a total of three eliminations. And I just got word from production, Tiff. That Team Kaylee, albeit yes, they've won twice. Maybe they listened to our advice on the main broadcast and tried to play a little bit more of a hyper aggressive play style. Got taken out, already Oof. eliminated in this lobby, 28. So their hopes of maintaining top 10 going into day two, likely not going to be the case. Probably will still be top 15, but have a lot of ground to still make up to walk away with a decent bit of change into day two tomorrow. Really cool thing about a 12 game series across two days is, well, there's always a possibility for a regain. So I expect to see them kind of watch the others. Maybe they'll do some reviews, hit the VODs and come back swinging tomorrow. But for Shifty, who's last alive for Soka and Von Bot here, it's going to be really important. This is your third place squad. They had 88.4 points coming into map number six. And to go out this early on would not be good. Still trying to acquire enough cash to be able to get them back in a mobile buy station. That's what we need here for Shifty. Resource management is king. And then sometimes you just need luck to be on your side. So huge victory here. Mobile buy will allow him to grab this quick buyback without threatening his own life. Going to make sure he's listening to all the audio cues he can get on the stairwell. Makes his way probably to the roof. Drops the mobile buy. will buy back at least one of his teammates close to getting two. But back over to uh, Shifty's teammate when it comes to World Series of Warzone. But not today. Sage is also trying to replicate some success. Looting up, getting all of their resources up. And again, this is kind of that middle game. This is what we're talking about. These are the important moments that if you if you don't do the little things right, in the big moments, you're going to fall flat. If you don't have enough bullets, if you don't have enough grenades, if you don't have enough smokes, those little things will dictate whether or not you're winning gunfights in a game like Warzone with the, the margin for error, the TTA being what it is, and everything in between, team shots, body stacking. You need every tiny micro advantage you can get your hands on. And just having one extra smoke could be the difference maker. Good shouts, and also shout out to Repulse, who's likely doing a watch party elsewhere. I know E Bates has been joining him on the Pulse Check. Uh, it's been a really good podcast. I've been enjoying the watch party. The vibes over there are always super hype. So, figured if we're going to be shouting out Sage, we might as well do that as well. Back to Symphony we go, staying hyper aggressive because they know they need to. Top five on the leaderboard, and an opportunity to do more. Symphony connecting on one or two could potentially be the signal flare this team needs to hop in the car and fly at this squad. They might do so anywhere. Currently on four eliminations. You're looking for about six or seven. That'll set you up for the in-game and through the windshield. Symphony grabs a knock. Here they go. Engines roaring. They go flying at their opponents. Player advantage. Can they execute on it? Linden's able to get the cleanup on one. As we barricade Huge. a little bit forward, there goes the team wipe there on 5x5, five five, just on the outskirts. UAV in air, still picking up a lot of pings. But Lennon already on that five kill streak, going to be massive, considering this squad is in fifth place with 80.5 points, coming into map number six, a mere 24.5 points out of first place. All right, this is going to be a little bit tougher of a fight than the last one. I'd love to sit here for just a moment longer because this really is going to be denoting of how well this map goes for them. If they can clear this POI, wipe this final team, this could be huge. Let's do a quick listen in of this fight. All squad members are in the safe zone. Uh, don't, don't sell your life. Don't sell your life. I don't know if we push this. They have an awkward one. No, no, they're, they're going to make a mistake. They're going to make a mistake. You want me to push up to you or sit back or safe? Uh, not sure. Hold up.
Wait for another put in, I guess. I'm just like bagging it. Is he in that corner? I think so, yeah. He's on my floor. Other two are low. I wall bang it. Wait, 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 wait. They both ran out the front. I can shoot them yeah. through the ceiling. I see, I see, I see. One just, one just opened it up, bomb. Right. right below. Oh, fuck. Oh, here. Enemy, enemy. Oh, crack, 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 one E. He ran out the back. He's trying to run. He, okay. he hit my money, he hit my money. He's weak as fuck. I'm in. Close door here. Where'd that one go? I have another UAM popping. Yeah, I'm popping. Yeah. Copy. UAV is on stage. Oh, all in there. Do we have nades? Can we get a nade in there? I'm restocking my nades. Oh, uh, that's second move. Yeah, hold on. I'm not going to... Wait, 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 wait. I, I, can, I can nade this. I can nade this. Hold on. Open the door. Fist in. Yeah, ready? Ready, ready. One's up, salute. Another one's one shot. They're both cracked. Get out, get out, get out. Out of me, out, out, out. He just... No way, I didn't... No, he's got another one. On me, last game, on me, last game, I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you. Wait, wait, wait. On me, back side here. Uh, uh, then, right, wait, wait, he got, no, got a plus. One E. Absolute, can we go? Bro, he has resolute, he's running quick when he's fucking weak. Like, what? And there are the final moments. An incredibly well-timed fight by the trio. They did lose Symphony, but I mean, talk about patience is a virtue. This is a denoting factor of a high-quality Warzone trio led by a solid IGL tiff. You've got to know when to run and gun and fly at squads like the first fight and when to know how to play incredibly patient, slow your roll, bide your time, wait for your opponent to make a mistake nearly perfectly executed by this trio yeah it's been super impressive honestly they have the cash to be able to grab symphony back and they're gonna head over to that mobile buy station to be able to do just that but picking up a multitude of streaks to be able to utilize them later sitting on north of five eliminations for the team but let's see how they're keeping pace with team crinks adrian and Aiden. The other team at the top. Again, top of the leaderboard. Also showing a bit of patience. And Symphony's going to try to win his life back so his teammates don't have to worry about him. They've got the cash to bring him back, I believe. True. The Symphony's been playing fantastic today. See if we can get the better of rated. This is going to be a tough one. Ooh, uh oh, that's so <laughs> unfortunate. Goes the caster curse comes through. Raided played that insanely well. Well, good thing the teammates do have the cash to get the squad back in. Checking in with Nano, three eliminations on the board thus far, and a mortar strike coming in clutch for the enemy team. Forcing Ugh. them to reposition. There's nothing you can do that you can do when you see a giant, you know, rectangular package full of C4 land at your feet. Uh, like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, Raid had checked all the corners, deduced it down to maybe just the one, and perfectly executed. Very well done. But look, Nano's team's actually been playing really, really solid today. I believe they just recently crept outside the top 15 after the last map. They'd like to get back into the top half of this tournament going into day two. So we'll continue to check in with him when we can. Let's keep moving around as Huskers showing us a little bit of what he can do at that sniper. This is what Huskers did during the 200k only a couple days ago at this point. And one of the reasons they won was hit snipes like that luckily his teammates there for the trade havoc been playing well today as well that's authorized falling you know rated just flew in recently probably doesn't have all the resources necessary to make a play this is a big team fight for them to take because rated squad is within the top five as well yeah, this is real tough. It's it's probably been one of those fights that's been lasting entirely too yep. long. But with that gulag starting to close, you might as well burn it if you've got it. Havoc falls incredibly low and then eventually gets knocked. Rated going down once again. Here goes the self-res and Huskers is able to close the distance and hit the tap. But these three are playing alongside each other really well. Bouncing off, sharing resources and making sure that no one gets fooled completely.
Yeah, and again, Havoc Squad, this team on your screen right now is in 10th place right now. They're in 11th before. They had a decent map going. This one looking a little bit better. I I've been very impressed with Havoc's skills in Warzone. He's showing us that he can compete. He's on six eliminations. He's kind of their entry man, and it's paying off. He's finding a couple more to boot. This man's going crazy, and this is a customs. This could be one of the biggest maps of the day, Tiff, kind of out of nowhere if they keep up this pace. The problem is they're on edge of zone. They've got to rotate wide out in the open. I don't see a, a zip anywhere, and so they're going to have to kind of run and smoke their way to the next circle and likely be somewhat out of position. Going to be tough to win, but could creep into the top eight. Maybe you're almost hitting double digit eliminations and you started in this map. 54.8 points in 10th place. A lot of room for growth to be able to climb up the leaderboard, but this is how you start it. It smokes forward. Gonna have to keep pushing. Now, as we pull kind of more towards north of Zaravan City, this is kind of the area right here, which is against the stadium per se. You've got the water on the northern side, and this is where the collapse starts to happen. Yep. They run into a large chunk of issues as everyone trying to make their way. No one wants to really rotate through the water just yet, but you're going to hold the building line. So the smoke's coming through, and so far, only Havoc was fulled. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm impressed they only lost one in that rotation. A very tough one to make wide out in the open with a couple different angles of likely some teams on high ground. They lose Havoc. There is a buy... I believe, is that on top of the building, a portable buy that's been dropped, probably by a team that's up there? If Hustlers can pick up a couple in transition, they showed their score, Tiff. They were on 16 eliminations. The most eliminations on the day, as he does get a knock, is 22 by Team Krinks at the top of the leaderboard. This is still the makings of one of the biggest games of the day. If they can hold out for just one more place, they're into the 1.3x multiplier, and then can play for the final couple fights and potentially win it all. It's going to be tough because they're on low ground, but if they can get some nice zone pulls, it is certainly possible. That's true. Yeah, there you go. They've got the cash. It's up top. Sounds like they're going to try to hit that buy. Meanwhile, Huskers was able to grab a knock on to Robstar. So Team Scraps is in the distance looking to vie for that as well as Tommy and co. But it's just no co. Tommy last alive for the squad. And something's really interesting here as we go through the squad. I, I, I mentioned that Tommy should be a really good caster one day once he's ever done competing. <laughs> and bro was like, are you telling me to retire? And I was like, no, yeah. you have so many tournaments left to excel in my guy. When you do decide to, hop in the booth. I be respect fun. that. Be fun. I, I did get word, by the way, from production, Linen squad has been fully eliminated. So le likely they're still going to maintain the position inside the top five, at the very least top six. That's Linen, that's FIFA Kill, that's Symphony eliminated. And here's a quick look at that leaderboard while we're in this last map of the day. You can see Team Kaylee was in 8th place at 67.4. This was the leaderboard going into this lobby. So they had a little bit of a, I think, what is that, a 6-point margin or so from 5th to 6th place with Skullface hot mm -hmm. on their heels. If Team Skullface is still alive, they could lose a top 5 position, but still be in a decent spot going into day 2. We'll see. Ooh, and with that leaderboard on the side of your screen, Team Havoc, if they're already on 16 eliminations, yep. Kaylee's already down and out. Yep. This is going to allow them such movement on this. Tommy, though, with Sniper in the hand, just trying to pick up some eliminations almost into that top five, which would really... Actually, it's not going to move the muscle. They're still in a 1.3x multiplier regardless if you go out or not. Wait, oh, whoa. Huskers goes down in sixth is what we saw. So they got the 1.3x multiplier. They had like yeah. 17 eliminations or so. They're going to move up the leaderboard. They're going to be happy about today. Where will they fall after six? I'm not positive, but I think they're going to be pretty solid going into day two to have a chance to make home, uh, make a ton of cash. Now, back to Booyah and Swag looking for one of their first big games of the day. An opportunity to do it in this one. One of the last remaining trios last alive. Five trios left. Only nine players. Make it four. Four and nine players so they have a sizable chunk of the rest of this lobby they could win it all right here and all of a sudden booyah mantles goes down pins in trouble as well both i believe wiped that is gotta be frustrating and i think that's killed by gabagool that's skull face on the other side that just got that knock that's team joe with Breadman, skull face 
An opportunity to continue to climb this leaderboard. We're in 13th place, then 9th, then 6th, and now we're going to be top 5 going into day 2 with the performance they're putting on this final map. Where are they? They're all three alive, Tiff! This is the team to watch. I've been saying it since the beginning, and they have a chance to win it all right here. A 3v1, no questions asked. A massive victory to finish off the day. Team Skullface drastically moving up this leaderboard with the final victory of the day. And we got six more agree. Like, today never even happened, you know? We just yep. started out nice and chill. Yep. Yeah, I can't believe that person self. <laughs> I love that mm -hmm. for them. I love that for them. Let's good go. plays. Good plays. Good plays. Let's go. Good plays coming out from Team Skullface. I'm curious to see those eliminations because Skullface was north of 10. Getting some gifted, getting some love from the channel as he should. Again, this is uh, Urzikstan's top earner on your screen. Skullface has already won $47,000 on this map alone. He's been making waves in the comp scene, and I love this value add to the Joe Bread man duo skullface just an incredibly smart player and it's showing here at the very end they said we started off slow but we finished strong and that's exactly what we thought would happen let's take a look and see if we get a chance to peek at how many eliminations they had 21, 21 to finish off okay. the last game of the day uh tiff if i'm not mistaken although it's not the most kills we've seen today team cranks did drop 22 eliminations that is the highest score on the day at over 30 points the highest score before that with team cranks i believe at 29.5 so over a 30 point game 21 times 1.5 there you go there's your math and it's definitely it. gonna jump them up the leaderboard pretty dramatically going from sixth place probably into the top four maybe hot on the heels of top three there was just enough of a margin at the top there you go 31.5 there's enough of a margin at the top that i'm not sure they broke into top three but they're gonna be set up very well going into day two tomorrow I mean, that's what they needed to do, right? They've been slowly but steadily climbing through as we go through the replays to see how this started, right? Tommy, this squad, Mizu, immediately running into some issues, but then it was Lennon. That whole listen-in sequence that we got from that squad was phenomenal. And if these replays look like a sniping montage, I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> That's exactly right. And Havoc went big in this map. Again, the team got sixth overall, but really on the back of Havoc's slaying ability, they had 17 eliminations as a trio. Watch out for that squad on the leaderboard. They're going to move. And Huskers also finding a ton of eliminations in kind. But here's that final elimination and a final victory for Joe O, Breadman, and of course, team captain Skullface uh, grabbing a victory, grabbing the biggest game of the day, grabbing a 31.5 point game. What a way to finish for that trio. And again, excited to see where they end up on that leaderboard after the first day today. Honestly, me too. I think we're tallying up just one more score. And once that is finalized, we'll be happy to share it with you. But let's go ahead and think back on the day. It's been a journey and we're only halfway through our series. Day one is just about to be finalized once we can confirm those scores with you. But our first map kicked off with Team Serve taking that victory early on and they kind of ran the leaderboard for an extended period of time. But once we got past that third and fourth game, we had a couple different winners. We had Kaylee taking the win in maps two and five. Fell early in map number six and are trying desperately to hold on to that top 10 position. Braxton took the win in game number four. Crink started out that domination in map number three. And Skullface, slow and steady, wins the race. A massive game in game number six. And let's get that leaderboard up on your screen go. so we can talk about who is going to be going the distance in that halfway Whoa. point. Wow. Tiff. That's crazy. Team Cranks did maintain top position, but I was totally off. Team Braxton and Team Von Butt and Team Lennon didn't have too big of a game, a mediocre at best, which allowed Team Skullface to drop from sixth place all the way to second with a score of 106.3. As a reminder, going into that final map, Team Braxton had a little over 99 points. They dropped a four-point game. Yes, still in a great spot going into day two, but opened up the window to allow Skullface, Breadman, and Joe to make a massive leap in the final map dropping the biggest map of the day team von bot 35.4 team linen 91.3 that's your top five after day one and like you said kind of hanging out the top of the leaderboard at the beginning of the tournament and then slowly filtering off but still maintaining position